data has gotten too big. Whether you're a B2B marketer or a consumer brand, your data needs to be viable, relevant, and accessible so that Starista can help you retain customers, acquire customers, and make it personal. Welcome to the Marketing Star Podcast by Starista, probably the most entertaining marketing podcast you're going to put in your ear. I'm Vin, the producer here at Starista. The goal of this podcast is to chat with industry leaders and get their take on the current challenges of the market, and we'll have a little fun along the way. In today's episode, Larry Schaefer, Senior Vice President of Marketing and Business Development at Insperity, joins AJ and Vincent this week on the show. He talks about how advancing the brand, finding direct leads, and creating opportunities are valued strategies. Give it a listen. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Starista's The Marketing Stir. I am your host, Vincent Petrofessa. I got an extra little pep in my voice today. That's because I was at a New York Giants game yesterday. So you would imagine I was screaming, uh, they tied. Let's see what happens when this episode comes out. They tied the Washington Commanders. And that was fun. I got to be there with uh, LG Ad Solutions and uh, Serge, one of our you know, friends of the program uh, there, Serge Mata. So I thank him if he's listening. But I got a little extra, you know, I got to get that voice ready. Uh, AJ, that's AJ. We'll get to him in a moment. But so it's so great to be here, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for listening. This is the Marketing Stir. Let's pause for one second to talk about Starista. Who are we? This is all we do is we talk about us for ourselves for like 14 seconds. We're a marketing technology company. We own our own business to business data, business to consumer data. We help companies access that data through our technology to help them get new customers. Who couldn't use new customers, right? I'm their vice president of B2B products and partnerships and also your co-host. Thank you so much. Email me at vincent at starista.com. That is how confident I am. I just gave you my email address and thank you for emailing. And thank you for coming up to me now at conferences, ladies and gentlemen, and telling us how much you love the podcast and also discovering Starista. We appreciate it. Let's discover our co-host, ladies and gentlemen. I will see him in person in just a few short days for our third annual summit. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. AJ Gupta. What's going on, AJ? Hey, Vincent. Congratulations on the nice fantasy when you had over Blaine. That's and- right. Looks like I'm going to pull through as well. So we might see each other in the playoffs. You know, I was thinking about that. I had this little, I'm not getting ahead of myself. I'm like, man, what a cool episode would it be if me and AJ like went head to head in the playoffs and, uh, you well, know, let's, let's make it the finals playoffs might not be pay-per-view worthy. I know, but, uh, oh man, that would be, uh, that would be great. Yes. I put a, uh, hurting on Blaine, our senior vice president of data solutions here. And it was a big, big win. And I got to just see him in person. So I'm sure that softened the blow, Uh, you know, took him out to a nice Italian restaurant here. But it's great to be here. Are you excited for our summit, AJ, coming up? Yeah, it's going to be a big week. We got our board meeting tomorrow and we got chicken and pickle Wednesday summit on Thursday. It's a packed uh, week, just like we do it at Starista. Absolutely. You know, flying out. I'm I'm in New York City, so I saw the weather is going to be about 79 degrees, 75. That's a blessing because it's freezing right now here in the city, but it is great. Uh, AJ, we've got a great guest today. And you you just learned that this guest is very close to where you are, uh, you know, where we're headquartered in San Antonio. So, you know, maybe, you know, a lunch meeting. This guy's great. So you're going to maybe a lunch to get together, hang out, right? Uh, I'm so glad we got to meet him. And I know that you're going to love him, ladies and gentlemen. Let's keep a warm marketing stir. Welcome the Senior Vice President of Marketing and Business Development and Sparity, ladies and gentlemen, Larry Schaefer. What's going on, Larry? Yeah, Vincent, uh, AJ, it's great to be here. Uh, Looking forward to uh, get to know each other a little bit better. Absolutely. It'll be fun. Yeah, no, it's great. Uh, Larry and I had already talked uh, and and we haven't met yet, Larry, but uh, hoping to change that. But, you know, it's been really... I've always known of Insperity, and I, I wanted to talk to you and have them share your story. A lot of uniqueness here, because let me tell you, you're, let's just get back to your title for a second, Larry. Your title, it's a title you don't see the two functionalities together a lot. You know, So Senior Vice President of Marketing and Business Development. It's like two of the things where you don't often see that together, but want to hear more about that. But first, Larry, tell us about Insperity and then the role that you have there. Well, great. Insperity began back in 1986 
uh, by two founders. It, we are in the human resources business. And so in those early days, it was all about just providing basic payroll and benefits to small businesses. And uh, over the 36 plus years now, we've developed into what could be called a full Fortune 500 HR department. And we make our services available to small and medium sized businesses. And uh, the company has uh, grown over the years. I've been, I'm about to have my 24th year anniversary with the, with the company and have uh, been able to grow up here. And uh, we will do about 6 billion in revenue this year and all across the country and 41 major markets. And uh, business is, is really good. We love, uh, we love hearing that and Larry, your role, what do you, you know, what are you doing there? I, I, I love the, love the combination. Tell us about some of the day to day, if you will. Absolutely. Well, in regards to uh, bridging uh, and integrating marketing and business development, it really made sense. I have a, a fellow senior vice president who's over sales and we've, he's got an organization of almost 900, uh, you know, getting close to a thousand sales professionals, sales management, uh, sales operations, and um, we are a sales-driven company. And since we are selling a service, uh, it is not a transactional purchase. Uh, every sale that takes place, there is one of our full-time sales professionals, frontline salespeople that are interacting with the prospect, taking them through the value proposition and bringing them to make a decision to either go with us or not go with us, or maybe later, you know how that, that goes. And so in the, the marketing world, all of the traditional parts of marketing is certainly what we do in regards to advancing our brand, uh, digital advertising, me traditional media. Um, but we also have the business development side where I say we are creating opportunities and we're creating environments where our salespeople can thrive out in their markets. And uh, so it, it works together beautifully and it's um, uh, something that is, I really enjoy doing. And Larry, do you have experience in both areas? And then, so, then also tell us the origin story. Like how did you get into just like marketing in general? So first, both skill sets, previous experience, and then how you got into marketing. I appreciate that because I'm, I'm not a career marketer. So, uh, my path was maybe a little bit unique from, from many others. I started out that 24 years ago as an entry-level sales rep, wow. uh, then moved into uh, sales management and did that for about four years. And then I made a transition over to overseeing one of our service centers. So I transitioned over to the service side as a general manager and was in service operations for about eight years. Then I had a stint in corporate business development. So that was looking at partnerships, looking at acquisitions and uh, working in that arena. And what happened about six years ago, our previous head of marketing departed and uh, I just kind of brought together this unique mind, th this unique experience of being in sales and being in service operations and uh, actually, you know, corporate development and um, also having led organizations, the organization really needed a infusion of fresh leadership. And so by bringing all those together, um, I had a great team with great marketing skills and I really have learned from them in regards to the nuts and bolts of marketing. Um, but they really brought me in for the organizational leadership skills. And what I have found is, I feel like I finally landed in the right place. I love marketing. I love everything about this organization. And I feel like everything I did before was just to prepare me for this position. Larry, tell us a little bit about how you guys are going about marketing. What are some of the channels and strategies that you focus on? Good, I'd love to. We, we kind of look at it in, um, there's three main imp impact areas. First of all, just advancing our brand. Uh, that's the first area. The second one is creating direct leads. And then the third one, which I just referred to in business opportunities is, is creating opportunities, a rich selling environment for 
our salespeople to work in. So, you know, advancing the brand, we'll, I think, you know, we'll talk about that a little bit more here in a moment, but when it comes to advancing the brand, everything matters, not just your formal uh, media and not just everything on digital, but everything related to how the marketplace experiences our company, which has an awful lot to do with all of our people that work out in the marketplace. So advancing our brand and then creating direct leads is really, really critical as well. Uh, and we are seeing that grow significantly. We have, I would say over the last three or four years, we've been uh, you know, tinkering and adjusting and testing in regards to both digital advertising and, and becoming more uh, successful with digital search. Um, and, and moving into, uh, you know, other arenas where we are giving uh, the marketplace the opportunity to raise their hand and say, give me a call. So that's what we mean by, you know, like, you know, creating direct leads when someone uh, through our website and through other means says, you know, I'm a, I'm a prospect, I want to talk to you. But that really accounts for, a, a you know, about 30% of our business. The other 70% comes from creating these opportunities, which is channels, marketing into key alliances and key associations. And something that we have developed pretty significantly over the last five years is we have about 1,400, maybe even up to 1,500 micro events in all of our different markets uh, around the country. And so those little micro events can be uh, networking events, they can be specialized dinners, uh, they can be a speaker, thought leadership. We use, you know, even axe throwing, wine tasting, cooking classes. We do all kinds of high, high touch professional events to create this environment that our salespeople can bring prospects to. Our clients can come and introduce new prospects to us. And it's not a hard sales event, not at all. Actually, it's it's a, just a, a soft it's a networking event where we bring together professional people that can uh, get to know each other. And we don't even focus. It sounds funny, but we don't even focus on getting referrals. We focus on getting the right people in the room and good things happen. Larry, that's great. We have very similar philosophy to you. Vincent and I uh, have, do a lot of networking and trade shows. So pandemic was a little hard for us to be contained, but we're glad that the world has uh, reopened. <laughs> oh, we, we are. Yeah, we're very excited about that. We did figure out how to do some of these events, you know, on Zoom. Uh, right. You take a tequila tasting, you send out some of the tequila ahead of time and you know how that all that goes. And, and so we pivoted, but nothing like being in person. We, we Absolutely. Were. So Larry, what's kind of the biggest challenge you're facing in your role, whether it's in marketing or biz dev? Well, you know, all of the functional areas in my role are are working well, all, all the functional areas that I just mentioned. Um, you know, when I when I think about the biggest challenge, um, it, it's getting enough face time with my people to let them know I care about them, that I support them. Um, and when I say my people, not just the ones that report to me, but I've got about 140 people in my organization. Um, but, you know, you just get buried in, 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 in the work. I get, you know, I spend a lot of time with my direct reports, you know, which there's, there's seven of them, but, you know, just having more time to get to know the 140 employees in my organization. I wish I had more time to do that. And, um, you know, even when I'm here at the corporate office, like I am today, walking the halls, I've always got in the back of my mind, a presentation coming up to the board or a meeting coming up. And it, it, it can just be distracting sometimes from stopping and looking people in the eye, finding out how they're doing um, and interacting with them on a personal basis. So I just find that to be a challenge sometimes. And I wish I had more time to do that. And, and you know, Larry, that kind of goes into one of the questions we like to ask a lot, and especially you kind of hit on it where, you know, keeping morale up during yeah. these last few years. And, you know, I know we certainly did a lot of, uh, you know, events and similar, like you just said, just like interacting and maybe doing, you know, company jeopardy uh, with everyone on it, for example. 
But, you know, uh, how are you keeping up that morale? Uh, you know, any tips out there or, or struggles, right? Well, we are fortunate that we, we have a great culture um, and uh, our, our great culture attracts the kind of managers that really not only get the job done, but care about people. And so I, I, we really hire with that mindset, or I really look for people to lead in my organization that are both very, very competent and they, uh, you know, keep our people accountable to executing and to doing excellent work. But at the same time, they're very kind and caring people. And we have, you know, that that starts right at our CEO who, who uh, has built a culture of both excellence and care uh, working together. Uh, so that in many ways, it just kind of happens as a flow of our business. But what I find is you still need to have scheduled programs. I, I, I hate to call them programs, but you know what I mean. You schedule yeah. time to enhance morale. So what we do in our department is we have quarterly meetings. We uh, schedule them in advance and we encourage everybody that can possibly physically be here at the corporate office. And it turns out about 80 to 90 percent of my department can be here on one particular day. And we have a breakfast, you know, like an open breakfast together in our break room. Um, I get to have I schedule one on ones with all of our new employees that started over the last quarter. Nice. Uh, we have like a two hour meeting, you know, the state of our organization, different people get to share about what they're working on. And then we have a happy hour that night. So we just kind of dedicate a full day to everybody be, being together. And, uh, you know, kind of like AJ, you were referring to beforehand. I mean, when people get together now, they appreciate it more than ever. And the energy and the excitement of uh, all getting together and doing these things. So that's that's one thing that has really helped to keep the morale very, very positive here. Yeah, no, yeah, thank, thank you for sharing that. And, you know, Larry, I, I think, you know, in Sparity, because, you know, it's dealing with, you know, the, the HR aspect, uh, you know, uh, HR has been very important and very pivotal, I feel like, all the time, but especially these last few years. I'd love to get your own sense of, you know, what separates Insperity, right? What, 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 why, why should a company adapt Insperity? Yeah, uh, that is a, that's a great question. We define our, our brand promise uh, as we have a depth and breadth of service that is unparalleled in the industry. And we deliver that service with a level of care that is absolutely unique as well. So we, we say that, you know, uh, and I understand our competitors may say the same thing, and that and that's fine. That's understandable. There's a there's a relativity to what I just shared, um, but you know, it starts with the heart of our people, and that is is that we believe that we provide a depth and breadth of service that is unparalleled. And there's a sense again that comes from our CEO and the amazing culture that we have that the, the level of care that our people have for our clients, you know, businesses, bit small and medium sized businesses who we believe are the, the, the heroes of our economy, uh, you know, the real champions to our, our country, our small and medium sized business leaders. Uh, we, we want to help them to succeed. And we are so um, passionate about it that we believe that when we help our small business and mid-sized companies succeed, that their communities are actually improved. You know, their communities prosper as a result of, the, of our clients being successful. So there's a, uh, a, a real passion that goes behind that. And you know, certainly I say that, but uh, our client testimonies really bear the fact that quite often they'll leave and go to a competitor for maybe a little bit lower cost. And we have a high percentage that come back and say it's just not quite the same. Larry, in a large company like yours, how do you kind of humanize leadership and how does the company culture come into play? Well, the company culture is really, really critical. Uh, it, it's, you know, for us, it's, it's everything. And I I guess I can't em emphasize this enough because I keep bringing it up, but our, our CEO, uh, who I've mentioned several times, Paul Cervati, 
uh, is also the person that founded the company back in 1986. And so he's kind of a unique individual, uh, really an entrepreneur at heart, but to be able to uh, to take the company from startup through um, going public through, um, you know, six billion in revenue. It's pretty, pretty unusual for someone to do that. But he has been able to do it, obviously, because he's a great business mind, um, but he's a genuine person. Uh, and so uh, employees have said from time to time they see him in the elevator and he interacts with them, you know, just like they're the most important people in the world. Uh, and that filters down to uh, the rest of our executive leaders who seek to do that as well. Um, AJ, it's just it's just really, really important that leaders uh, become, you know, human and, and and share their lives and become honest and look uh, look the employees in the eyes and uh, ask about them and care about them. And, you know, it, 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 it creates this culture where our employees uh, tend to have a tremendous amount of faith and trust in the executive leaders and, and support. <laughs> And what comes out of it quite often is that discretionary effort. You know, they, they care uh, because they work for executives that, that care about doing the right thing and, and have alignment with their values. So uh, it, it's, it's very important. So a lot of our listeners are young professionals that are getting started or even college students who study marketing. Uh, can you tell us what you think are some of the important skills in today's day and age that somebody needs to succeed in the field? Yeah, I, yeah. I'll, I'll go back to what I mentioned before, and that is, is that there's no shortcut for committing yourself to be excellent at what you do. Okay. I mean, um, to be highly skilled, to give yourself and dedicate yourself to being highly skilled in the, the fundamentals of your, your business. If you love marketing, then, then it certainly fits into that. Uh, maybe you can, you know, skate by uh, without uh, applying yourself to your marketing classes and classes if you're still in school. Or maybe you can uh, try to depend on your personality or your, uh, you know, certain skills. Uh, and I'm saying, you know, go above and beyond of really, really being dedicated to being an excellent uh, practitioner in what you do. And then in addition to that, the other key skill that I, I know both you, AJ and Vincent know, because you've been in business a while, the ability to deal effectively with people. Uh, is absolutely and quite often you know our our students may not learn that at the university campuses or it may not be taught uh the, the same way that it is other uh, particular uh, classes and skills and uh, but it, it's absolutely critical so find someone who you see as being really really well do, does really well of working with people um you know, who exhibits strong influence, persuasion, has a great persona, and find out what they do and how they think about working and influencing people. So those people skills are real cool. I like it. I like it. You know, people skills are very important. I, always, I tell everyone that. And uh, Larry, let, let's get back to something you said earlier. You talked about brand, brand building. Uh, yeah. One of the first things you said, uh, brand building is, is important for both companies and leadership. But how do the two differ in, in, in your opinion? And also, what are the benefits to employees building their own personal brand? Again, it's kind of flows into what you said earlier and then that persona you just talked about. Love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, well, it, they certainly are. They certainly are different. To me, they're different contributors to the one brand. In other words, every, when it comes to building your brand, your corporate brand, everything matters. Everything matters in regards to alignment of your traditional marketing, your digital marketing, your website, uh, your press releases, you know, everything should be integrated and everything's important. Um, but you go beyond that, what an amazing contribution to brand our people can make when they really apply themselves and when we 
really give them the tools and educate them to let them know how important they are as an individual to promote your brand. So, I mean, how they talk, um, how they act, how they treat customers, how they treat stakeholders, how they even treat vendors, how they treat each other, uh, how senior management treats them. Everything feeds off of uh, building a great uh, individual brand, brand within your employees that, that supports the, the corporate brand. So as, as an example, uh, what we have been working on for the last several years uh, and probably the reason that you found me, uh, you know, out on LinkedIn is we have, uh, I'll say it this way. A couple of years ago, I said to myself, I don't really have any reason to be on LinkedIn is what I told myself because I'm not looking for a job. So why should I spend time on LinkedIn? Well, that was incredibly short-sighted at that time. And uh, what I have discovered since is that when I put myself out there, not always talking about insperity, but putting myself out there as an individual, as someone that can maybe uh, uh, share my, my content, share my skills, share my encouragement with other people, uh, people automatically connect me to insperity. So I don't even have to sit and, and sell insperity or promote insperity. Mm -hmm. I just have to be a good contributing citizen to the LinkedIn community. And I find that my personal brand grows. And as my personal brand grows, I want it to be a good reflection of Insperity. So it's just another contributor. So for us, we've got about 4,000 corporate employees. Um, if we were having, encouraging all of them to function at the highest level in regards to social media, you know, to be great citizens on, on social media, to be contributing, to be uh, encouraging each other, to be building each other up. I mean, they're just an expression of insperity as well. And it gives us that extra brand boost in that regard. So yeah. all of it fits together. It's different strategies, but they all contribute to a great brand. Oh, well, yeah, no, and I'm glad you say that because, you know, I, I always tell people the reason we started this podcast, I was just on an, another podcast that casted, uh, they were talking about it, and it's like, for thought leadership, you know, we don't, you know, you, you won't me hear me mention advertising in this company, it's like, oh, this podcast is sponsored by, no, it's not, we don't take advertising, it's just thought leadership getting to hear people's thoughts on what's been happening, and a lot of great advice comes off, off of this podcast and people thank me for that and AJ for that, where they're like, thanks for getting the viewpoint uh, on, uh, you know, HR or, or uh, you have, we had on Regal Cinemas. They're like, well, we wanted to know what was happening with movie theaters because we like going to movie theaters, uh, that sort of thing. But Larry, your, your passion shines through. You could you clearly, you know, you've been there uh, almost 25 years. You, you know, it's the passion still there, I'm sure, from day one. So talk to us. What is the favorite part about your job and your work? Well, I, you know, I'd, I'd have to say my favorite part, and I, I, it's not just in marketing, but it goes back to the different organizations and different parts of the company I've been able to, to work in. But, I mean, my, my favorite part is always seeing my people develop, seeing them grow. Um, seeing uh, those, especially that report to me, getting promotions, um, and uh, you know that's that that's just what is so incredibly gratifying. Certainly, I've uh, we we've had a great year this year. We've got some great results happening in the marketing department, and that's don't get me wrong, that's very very fun and that's very gratifying. Um, but when I think about you know, when I retire, what I am going to look back on is not just the metrics that we achieved, but more importantly, the people that were um, a part of my group that uh, that, grew, that grew and expanded and, and were promoted and, and had more opportunities. Larry, I'm sure you get a lot of uh, LinkedIn messages. Uh, so one of our staple questions is around getting to know you a little bit better on the personal side. What's a message that gets an answer from you and what's one that really annoys you? <laughs> uh, AJ, that's, 
that is a very, very good question because here again, you know, two years ago, I wasn't on LinkedIn, so I didn't get all those messages. I just would get occasional emails. But I think you can imagine almost like both of you, you know, with my title, uh, a lot of people want to sell me stuff. Um, and I'm very empathetic because I, I'm a sales guy at heart and uh, I love salespeople and I love what they do. Um, but I'll start with the annoying part. It's like getting the same thing like over and over and over again without any research, without any creativity. Um, you know, immediately, as soon as I connect, as soon as I accept their connection, they send me a note that says, hi, thanks for connecting. Can we get, you know, 15 minutes together or can we do this and, and whatever it is. It's just, I get, you know, 10, 10 to 15 of those a day. And it makes me feel bad that I can't respond to all of them. Uh, I can't, I can't take on all those meetings, but it's just, it's just really not possible. But every once in a while, AJ, there will be someone that will show that they've done a little bit of research. They mentioned something about me personally, um, something about my profile, or they found out something somehow and they, and they bring it up whether it be, you know, one of my volunteer activities or, you know, my love for golf or whatever it might be, they bring it up. And then I have this uh, sense of obligation to respond to them because they did something extra. They did something innovative. And uh, that, you know, that kind of pulls at my heartstrings, I guess you might say. Larry, speaking of uh, looking you up and volunteering, uh, we did spend a little bit of time on your LinkedIn profile, as you can imagine. <laughs> so we noticed uh, volunteering is important to you. And this one particularly struck out to me because it was uh, looks like you've done some work in Africa. So we'd love to learn about that, especially because my parents lived in Africa and Zambia for five years. So I had a chance to spend a lot of time there. Well, yeah, I have um, been involved with some uh, you know, both here locally in my community as, as well as, uh, you know, that was through my, my church. We did uh, some trips over to Africa where I was able to work with uh, community leaders and Christian leaders and, uh, and teach some principles to them. Um, it, uh, you know, it, it, well, whether it be, you know, going into the prison, which I've worked also with prison entrepreneurship program where, you go into the prison and, and you work with um, um, inmates that uh, and help them to develop skills of entrepreneurship, uh, and, you know, even job interviewing skills. You know, I might spend an afternoon doing that or for Africa, those those trips were usually about two weeks. So I would book those ahead of time. So whether it's one afternoon in a prison or whether it's two weeks in Africa, when the time comes, it's like, I don't have the time to do it. You know what I'm saying? And that's the way it always is with doing good things like volunteer work. There's always this job, you know, that, that weighs on you. But I will tell you every time when I push that aside and move forward and get involved with contributing, um, it, you walk away from it and you're so enriched. It, you, know, you, you go there to try to help other people and it works out to where you're the one that feels incredibly blessed, uh, encouraged, and and rich for doing it. So uh, I would just encourage everybody to, you know, rip the Band-Aid off, take some time, you know, off from your busy schedule and go and do that. And uh, it'll really make a difference in your life. Yeah, that is great advice, Larry. And we do, you know, thank you for, you know, doing that, uh, you know, the, the volunteer work. We were a big believer of that here at Starista, uh, as well as, as people will, come to learn each summit we will raise money for an organization and we have one coming up very soon but yeah we loved that about you as well larry just doing some research on you and we're glad you're on linkedin you know uh we were we wish you were there longer uh did only just a couple of years but we're, we're happy you're there larry as we wrap this up here let's get to know you you mentioned golf a little bit there what else do you love doing with your uh, spare time hobbies well at, at... 
at my age, I do have grandkids. Um, Come on. Oh, wow. yeah. Yeah, I do. I do have four grandkids. I've got uh, two grown daughters and, and uh, they each have are married and have two kids. So, um, yeah, I, I can't help it. It's like when I think about when I have spare time, I, I love more than anything being with my grandkids. Um, and they kind of range in age. So I've got some that I can take golfing with me, a couple of the older boys, uh, you know, or, or play tennis, AJ, like you, I know you love, um, you know, take hiking and, and those type of things. And then I've got two others that are uh, a, a six month old little oh, wow. girl and then a two year old boy. And so that, that's just hanging out with them <laughs> and being with them. So I certainly in, enjoy that a lot. My, my wife and I have been married for 40 years. Wow. So my wife, Lee and I, uh, we love to try new restaurants and uh, love to eat out. And uh, that's something that we enjoy to get doing as well. That's amazing. Yeah. Congrats on 40 years and all the grandkids. That's uh, that is amazing. So Larry, before we depart, just a, a closing thought, anything you'd like our listeners to take away from this episode? Well, one thing I'd say, especially AJ referred to some of maybe some of the younger listeners. Uh, what comes to mind is I quite often when I get together with some of the younger folks in my organization and I say, you know, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? What do you want to accomplish? What are some of your professional goals, your professional aspirations? What I find is they usually immediately talk about their next promotion. Okay. If they're a manager, they want to be a senior manager. If they're a supervisor, they want to be a manager, whatever. They seem to, to think in those terms. And what I would challenge people to do is to think much broader and much bigger than that. Uh, and what I do when I, I said, is that really your highest aspirations? And they begin to reflect, well, maybe I would like to do this. And I push them further and say, well, why do you envision being the CEO? Oh, I've never thought about that. Well, what about at least a, a senior executive? Do you say, well, that would be nice. So what, I, what I'm saying is that I have to draw out of them the ability to really think big in regards to who they are and what they can accomplish. And what I did, whether I was smart or lucky or whatever, but it, way back when I started as that sales rep, I began reading the books about leading large organizations how to think of like a CEO. Uh, and I just began to think like that. I didn't, I didn't necessarily ever aspire to be the CEO of a multi-billion dollar company. But you know what? I thought, what's the downside of being prepared to do that? What's the downside of knowing how my CEO thinks and being able to uh, understand what it means to be an executive? It's only going to make my journey better. Uh, so I guess what I want to say is just like someone at some point has to sit down and design uh, a Lamborghini, uh, you know, you got that design team, they had to design with great detail, think in terms of that final, ultimate place you wanna go and think big. And uh, where, wherever you land is gonna be much better than if you just thought in regards to just that next step. I, I love that, Larry. Thank you so much for your your thoughts. You know, you're very uh, you know very inspiring, uh, and you know, keep up the amazing work in, in in your personal life, your volunteer life, and your professional life. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's Larry Schaefer. He's the senior vice president of marketing and business development at Insperity. Check him out. Uh, check out the episode. We're glad you're listening, ladies and gentlemen. That's Larry. I'm Vincent. That's AJ. This has been another episode of The Marketing Stir. Thank you so much, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to The Marketing Stir podcast by Starista. Please like, rate, and subscribe. If you're interested in being a guest on the podcast, please email us at themarketingstir at starista.com. And thanks for listening.